Thanks, Senator Haggis. Senator Warren of Massachusetts is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding this hearing. So fentanyl killed more than 78,000 Americans last year, including more than 2,300 people in Massachusetts, and crypto helps fund that death toll. Crypto plays a role at every stage in the illicit fentanyl trade. Chinese companies sell the chemical ingredients used to make fentanyl to drug cartels, and they get paid in crypto. Uh, the drug cartels and the traffickers sell their deadly drugs in the darkest marketplaces, and they get paid in crypto to the tune of about $1.5 billion in 2022. And drug kingpins buy weapons and cars and make payoffs, again, using crypto. Now, the Trump administration's DEA spotted this problem five years ago. In their 2018 threat assessment, they said that cryptocurrencies, quote, offer traffickers a relatively secure method for moving illicit proceeds around the world with much less risk compared to traditional methods. And since then, the problem has only gotten worse. Take one case. Last year, the Department of Justice indicted a Sinaloa cartel member who laundered nearly $900,000 in crypto by directing their U.S.-based drug couriers to deposit cash straight into the cartel's crypto accounts. And what did they then turn around and use that crypto for? They reinvested in the cartel's fentanyl factory so that they could pump more fentanyl into the United States. Now, Mr. Yoz, thank you for your work and for the work of hundreds of thousands of police officers in the United States who are on the front lines in the opioid crisis. You've seen the various tricks that drug traffickers use to move their drug money around. So if I can, let me ask you, why do you think cartel members find crypto such an attractive option. Well, Senator, thank you. Uh, thank you for those comments. And uh, I, 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 don't, I don't portray myself to be an expert on crypto. Fair enough. But I, I will say that uh, I, I think what we see is, see is an evolution. That evolution is it's crypto today. It's going to be something later. I think it's just the, the next thing that we have not. It's, uh, in, in law enforcement, we follow the money. It just makes it harder to follow the money. So I think, I think the fact that uh, it's, it's a, you know, emerging, uh, there are a lot of things that we st still need to figure out about, about, uh, about this. And I, I think that's what the appeal is to it. We're, we're a little behind in, in truly understanding how to, uh, to use it in a way that helps us combat crime. All right. So, uh, Mr. Urban, you have decades of experience at DEA following illicit fentanyl funds. Um, why do you think crypto has become so attractive? Uh, it allows for speed. It so you can move it fast, uh, yeah, yes, unlike Senator. cash, which you've actually got to physically carry. It's, it's larger. you physically got to carry it. It's much more difficult to conceal. Okay. So there's speed. There's, to some degree, anonymity. And then they can hold that asset and transfer and move that asset easily. So they're exploiting uh, the, the organized crime, the Mexican cartels, the lack of compliance and oversight within uh, the crypto industry. Just a lot easier to hide it. Is that basically what you're saying here? It's easier to hide. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So, you know, make no mistake, drug traffickers are also still moving uh, cash the old-fashioned way. But crypto has changed the game by allowing criminals to move boatloads of money instantaneously and nearly anonymously. You know, no need to try to stuff $900,000 in cold, hard cash into a suitcase and worry about whether some customs agent will spot it. Now cartel members can move as much money as they want using a handful of crypto wallets. Holes in our anti-money laundering laws have given drug dealers a back door to move their dirty fentanyl money around. And that back door is wide open, and it's helping fuel the opioid crisis at home. Mr. Yoz, if cartels and drug dealers and Chinese chemical companies can keep exploiting the holes in our anti-money laundering rules and keep funding the fentanyl business with crypto, what's that going to mean both for law enforcement and for families across this country? Senator, it's not a matter of can. They will. 
They will. They will, and they do, and they will continue to do it until we find ways to close those gaps. All right. Well, it is about closing the doors, and that's why 20 senators, including seven right here on the Banking Committee, are working to pass a digital asset anti-money laundering act that closes these loopholes in our money laundering rules. Crypto shouldn't get a free pass, and I look forward to working with all of my colleagues to finally fix that. Thank you all. Thank you.